our world is full of fake things from things we see online to people we interact with there's a lot out there that is insincere and that is not genuine lord willing that could never be said about our faith Hello, I'm Ben Driver, and this is Equipping the Saints, where we are striving to equip every member of the body of Christ through the Word of God. Today, we're talking about having a sincere faith and what it will look like in your life when you have that sincere faith. So let's get to work. We are looking at 2 Timothy chapter 1, and in this text, Paul is writing to Timothy, and he begins in verse 3, saying, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that you may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith. A faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you. I love this text for many reasons, and, and it goes on to give us many more great truths. But one of the things we notice here is that Paul, as he writes to Timothy, says, I am reminded of not just your faith, but your sincere faith. Your faith that is genuine, your faith that is not hypocritical, but rather it is the real thing, the real deal. Timothy does not have a fake faith. And because of that, it's going to have an impact on his life. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about this idea of a sincere faith and the impact that it can have on our lives. If you go through the entire text, all the way down to verse 12, you will see over and over again that this is a text that is all about God. And so one of the first things we need to point out in talking about a sincere faith is that sincere faith focuses on God. In verse 12, a, a famous verse, especially if you know the, the old hymn that uses this verse, it says, um, Paul says, I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed. Here's why. For I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. You see, Paul's faith, the thing that he's focused on is God. It's the person of God, the person of Jesus Christ, the person of the Holy Spirit. And if we're thinking about a sincere faith, I think the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, who am I focusing on in my faith? Where do I put trust and confidence? Sadly, sometimes we can put it in the wrong thing. Maybe uh, politicians or political uh, parties and agendas. Maybe we put our faith in, in money, in our abilities, in ourselves, in our relationships, in other people. But all of those things are insufficient. No, if we're going to have a sincere faith, it's got to be a faith that's focused on God. So let's look at a few things that sincere faith that is focused on God will do in our lives. A life that is marked by sincere faith is one that is equipped by God. In verse 5, Paul said, I'm reminded of your sincere faith. And then in verse 6, he says, for this reason, because of your sincere faith, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. A life of sincere faith is one that is equipped by God. Because of the sincere faith, Paul says, fan into flame the gift of God. You know, maybe you've had the experience where you had a campfire or something, and you came out the next day, and it was just barely smoldering. And what you could do in that situation is you could throw on fresh kindling, and you could fan it, and you could work, and you could build that back up into a fire. But for that to happen, there's got to be that flame to begin with. That flame is the thing that God has equipped us with. Paul is using this metaphor for Timothy to describe the gift that God has given him. Now, Timothy was probably given a miraculous gift, but as Christians, we all know that God has given us gifts. Romans 12 verse 6 says, as God has given us gifts, let us use them. And even if you can't think of a particular gift, 
Here's one gift that all Christians have, that is the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that when we repent and are baptized, that we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so we see that we are equipped with this spirit. Number two, a life of sincere faith means that we are empowered by God. In verse eight, Paul says, don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me as prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel. And he goes on to describe this gospel, who God is, what God has done for us. But what you get when you put all this together is that I am able to speak for God, I'm able to suffer for God, and it's all because God is the one who is empowering me, working through me. Faith says I'm not looking to myself, I'm looking to God, and so I find power from Him. And then lastly, number three, this sincere faith means that I am trusting God, but yet also He is entrusting me with something. In verse 13, Paul tells Timothy, follow the pattern of sound words that you've heard from me in faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. God has entrusted us with something, with a purpose, with a pattern of his truth, and with this precious treasure of the gospel. The question is, are we trustworthy? In some ways I'm not, but because of the grace of God, I've been redeemed, and so God has entrusted me with these good and wonderful gifts. And so let's be people who live a life of sincere faith.